Hey, 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 hello, everybody. Ooh, we got a little bit too hot for you. Hello, everybody. How's everyone feeling? Y'all, y'all gotta come better than that, man. How are y'all feeling? There you go, there you go. Getting some hype. How you doing? My name is Andrea Richmond, and I'm your host for this evening. Thank you for joining us at the 2022 Kickback Launch, streaming live from the Tabernacle in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's give a round of applause to all of the lovely panelists that we saw earlier, and also shout out to my uh, to the host before me, Crystal, for doing an excellent job earlier in this morning. We want to thank them again for all of the knowledge that they provided for us today and that we're seeing, all right? It's of the utmost importance that we open the doors for the esports community, for the next generation of gamers, especially for the Black and Latinx gamers. We want equal opportunity and diversity all around and across the board. All right, guys, at the ass. Y'all ready for this next matchup? All right, all right. We got all the education going on. Now it's time to get our game on, all right? So now it's time to introduce our very first live Valorant game. For our first team, we have, you know, are they the real HU? The fake HU? I say they're the real one. Either way, you know Howard University. One more time for them real quick. Hype up, Howard! Uh, all right, real HU. And for our second team, coming from Be More, always giving more, never less. Shout out to Morgan State University! All right, we also have coming up on stage, never leaving, never coming with an uh, egg on their face. It is Benedict College. It's happening downstairs for you. And also we have the University of Georgia also participating in some Valorant matchups. All right, we'll have the winner of each match play for each other in a final face-off, all right? For our casters, we have the fresh, the dapper, Cameron Frelick. And also, you know, I already used the more pun, but I'm gonna do it again. Bring in more, it's none other than Paul Morrison. Yes, sir. Boy. Thank all you right. so much. All right, we wish much. everyone good luck. Stay focused, y'all, all right? Get focused, man and play your best. Good luck, I'm wishing the best for you. And without further ado, let's get this thing started. All right, get to y'all seats, let's go. Getting ready to kick off these games. We got let's a little go. bit of Valorant to start you guys off. My name is Cameron, also known as Thor. It's my buddy Paul, also known as Possible. We've been casting Collegiate Valorant together for an extremely long time. So the opportunity to bring it to you guys like this oh, yeah. is just phenomenal. For the students, it's a fantastic opportunity. The energy on stage alone was infectious. Oh, definitely. You know, it only took two and a half years, but we finally made it to a <laughs> yeah. Collegiate van, uh, land together. But, uh, yeah. man, I'm so excited, though. Four dope teams coming out here in Atlanta, Georgia. Right next to Worlds going to be going on this weekend. Riot was here earlier today talking about like their immersion program, their internship program. Internships were live, so college students get on that. The application's live. Go do that. 
And I mean, what better place to start us off than Ascent Door? Because that's where we're starting with Valorant. <laughs> that's where we always go to in Collegiate Valorant, man. It feels like home. It absolutely is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the format, though. Andrea kind of mentioned it earlier on. These are best of one matches. We have four teams. So one team's going to play another. We have two of those games. The winners of those games go on to play another. It's as straightforward as that. Nice and easy. It was a seven map pool, which made the map pick ban simultaneously interesting <laughs> and completely uninteresting. Paul, you and I oh, yeah. have been casting Collegiate Valorant for a long time together, and there's a rule of thumb. If it's a best of one, it it's going to a set. To a set. Yeah. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> it's just the bread and butter of Valorant. Yeah. Right? Everybody has an Ascent in their back pocket. Everybody plays this map. Everybody loves it. It's just a very straightforward map, but one where you can pull out a lot of different diverse compositions, a lot of different strategies. You know, there's, there's, I don't want to say there's no rules for Ascent, because there are, but it, you're not shoehorned into doing one thing or another. Absolutely not. I'm curious to find out what the other match ends up going to. Of course, Benedict College and University of Georgia playing yeah. downstairs right now. Winner of that match will, of course, be back up on stage to play the winner of this one. You see Howard University and Morgan State up there at the top in our second match of the day. Be sure you guys tune in. Make sure you don't miss that or the league that's going on even later in the day. But to get back to this match, we have it lined up good talking a little bit about Ascent, as well as the level of play that we expect out of these teams. Collegiate Valorant actually tends to be pretty high in terms oh, yeah. of Collegiate Esports versus kind of their pro counterparts in terms of just raw skill level. So I'm expecting some good stuff from these teams, but the nice part about Collegiate is it also adds that little bit of spice in there where you get players that are really comfortable on something that might not exactly be meta. Sure. That makes things all the more entertaining. Oh, and you know, we got Harbor in the game now, right? We've yet to see pro play with Harbor. There's, there's some debate as to whether Harbor's good or not. The newest agent, <laughs> the newest character if anyone's maybe unfamiliar with Valorant, uh, it's going to end up being 5v5. Everybody locks in their own character at the beginning of the game, and then they have different abilities. We'll see how it plays out from there. Harbor, the newest one, uh, you know, he's got some he's got some good ability. I'd be surprised cool. if we saw Harbor on the set, <laughs> especially on this map. Like, maybe if we went to, like, Breeze, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, pull him out. Let's yeah, see yeah. it. I don't think we're going to see Harbor on Ascent today. No, but I think we will get to see some really exciting gunfights. One of the things yes. that you're talking about on Ascent that makes it so exciting, especially for the collegiate scene, is you can go in and kind of fly by the seat of your pants and be able to take advantage of having those one or two players that just have that dog in them, oh, right? Oh, yeah. that, that little bit of star power that gets them going, puts them high up on the scoreboard, and keeps the team afloat. Uh, I'm, I always love seeing the excitement that comes from uh, Collegiate Esports. You know, one of the things that actually stuck with me when uh, earlier today they brought out like the, the Riot Immersion uh, guys, the, the, the students who got to go to the Riot campus and be there. One of them said something that really stuck with me. It's about passion. Cameron. Exactly. Right? Nobody's more passionate than a collegiate esports oh, gamer. I'm These never, guys come home yeah. from, you know, 30 credit hour weeks, and then they play another <laughs> 30 hours every single day, grinding through, get, making sure that not only themselves, but their teammates are all on the same page, able to play these maps. And when we go to somewhere like Ascent, it's just going to be so much fun to watch. Oh, look, sleep schedule might not be great, but the <laughs> gameplay absolutely is. And yeah, especially when you put on a stage like this, mm -hmm. and I love that our production setup has got cameras for every last one of these players. You'll see the passion on their faces after every last one of those plays because they do light up and they're excited to be here. Opportunities like this aren't just good for us to watch. They're not just good for the community, but as an opportunity for these students, it's just phenomenal because they haven't experienced anything like this before. Being next to someone when you're gaming oh, really yeah. is a whole whole different experience when you're fist bumping left and right after every single round this is when miracle comebacks happen this is when you see the big turnarounds when teams can really swing their morale it's one thing to do to over a voice chat or over <laughs> discord or whatever but when you're right next to them you can shake their arm and you can get them back into and you can get the team hyped up i trust especially with the energy these players were bringing when they're hopping onto the stage that's for sure gonna be a factor all righty all righty now we we got to kind of look at this match and think to ourselves how do we think it's going to go, Dor? I see bears and I see bisons. And my money's on bears. See, you know, that is that is like the logical uh, transition, right? You think bears are a predator. But, <laughs> you know, I, bison are really big, Dor. Those are, that's a meaty animal, right? Those things are not designed to be taken down easily. <laughs> I don't think bison are natural prey of bears out in the wild. How often is that? Is there like, is there some America lore that we can get on that? <laughs> I'm not a historian, dude. I've got a computer science degree and I cast you. Look, look the, these guys are the, the <laughs> ones who actually, you know, are smart. Thankfully, uh, yeah. you know, they just pay us to talk. Yeah. Oh, boy. 
All right, so kicking things off though, generally speaking, we talked a little bit about there being agents that have different abilities that they bring to the table. We talked about a little bit of what we expect to see on a set, but we should talk a little bit about what a general agent composition brings to the table sure. because you can't lock in any more than one of the same character. So generally teams will come in with characters that are meant for taking fights, meant for taking duels, characters that are meant to kind of engage the fight for them and enable them to fight and characters that are also meant to kind of section off the map into favorable mm -hmm. slices so that they can take control of it all at once. Yeah, duelists, controllers, initiators, sentinels, right? Those are our general rules when it comes, or our general roles, rather, when it comes to Valorant. I mean, you got, always got to keep an eye on the duelists. The duelists, <laughs> and, and not just the duelists, but how the duelists are enabled by their team, right? These are going to yeah. be the flashy players. These are the ones who are up at the front, taking the first fights a lot of the time. But, you know, it, it's not it's not all about whoever your, your heavy fragger is. You got to make sure that you have the right coordination of utility, things like smokes to give them cover, things like flashes to get them around a corner, force defending teams off of the uh, the angles they'll be holding. So I'm, I'm interested to see what we're going to be walking into in terms of compositions because Valorant's in a really interesting position right now, you know, with the chamber, sentinel, heavy meta sort of falling out of favor and especially with, you know, Harbor getting introduced, there being more room to potentially play of those more double controller, those more smoke-heavy compositions where you obscure a lot of the map. Hey, you, you, you know I was on that Brimstone Viper way early. <laughs> you know I was all about it way before it was cool, and I got to mention it every single time. We got to queue up Brimstone Viper. We, oh, we, we really do. I can't believe we haven't done that yet. <laughs> I feel like that's just mean to do in rank. That's just... <laughs> oh, man. But speaking of other strategies, right? Sure. Outside of agent compositions, you kind of got the general understanding, of, right? The supportive players, the more active players that are out looking for duels. We also need to talk more about just how you execute a round because there are set plays in this yes. game, right? We, we talked about it uh, kind of being a, akin to general sports when you talk about having plays in football same exact thing here right you might want to look to take over that a site and everyone has exact places that they want to place their utility sure. throw their flashes smoke off this exact angle that way when their duelist goes in they know exactly what they're going to have and what they need to do when they get in there and so it's really fun to see set plays and for me that is honestly what sets good collegiate esports teams apart from the lesser ones is having that deep playbook exactly it's all that preparation it is night and day if you even even just one or two executes a site is going to get you so far absolutely we're going to take a look guys at what kickback cup has going for it and then we're going to get right into the gameplay be back in a sec The kickback is. The kickback is. The kickback is. The kickback is. The kickback is five. The kickback is gonna be epic. The kickback is a place you need to be. The kickback is a cultural event. It's a celebration of gaming, esports, hip hop. Same place, same time. It's anything you want it to be. Black gaming, sneakers. It's the culture. Music, fashion, and vibes. We got celebrities. We got influencers. We got subject matter experts. Timothy, Isaiah, and Kenny Mason will be performing. G Herbo will be in the building. Looking forward to seeing everyone from Community Riot. My two favorite schools are showing up, Howard University and Morgan State. The kickback is going to be transformative. We're all here as the gaming community at large to stick together. The kickback is important because we have been shut inside for so long. Come out, have a great time, enjoy esports, family and fellowship. The kickback is so important because it's a place where black people can be seen for who they truly are. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. Showing a little bit about what the kickback really is, right? It's a community event. It's a networking event. And as we get later on into the day, it becomes more important for these schools and especially these HBCUs to really be able to get out Absolutely. and get opportunities like this that they aren't offered normally. Yeah, and it, there's so many cool people showing up to this, yeah, right? right. Like the Riot Esports director, we had like, uh, uh, I think it was head of marketing, yeah. right? Um, so many cool ways to get involved with Riot Games Directly, And that was another cool thing uh, about one of the panels earlier. They were talking about how when you work for like a gaming company, it's about connecting to your player base directly. It's like if the NBA just got to talk to everybody who ever picked up a basketball. <laughs> I loved that line. I just had to say it again. And when you manage to put together something like the Kickback Cup, where it's not only do we have great gameplay coming up for you folks, but we also have such cool network opportunities if you're able to make it here in person. There's just nothing like it. 
And some sick concerts. Push and killed it last night. <laughs> Me too, dude. Dude, the, the building was actually shaking, and we're in the basement right now. You yeah. can see the brick walls. You could feel it down here. It's a lot of fun. If you guys can, if you got the invite, come on out. It has been an absolute blast. Definitely. It's going on way later into the night. Maybe come away, catch some Valorant. Catch some leave. You got some spare time. But speaking of the Valorant and the League, League of Legends coming up later is going to be a lot of fun. We got a best Definitely. of three breaking down in that. And I think the best of three is going to just be a blast because it offers the teams a little bit of opportunity mm -hmm. to adjust to one another. There's there's some magic to the flash in the pan best of one that oh, we're yeah. going to be doing for Valorant. But League seeing kind of the, the strategic depths that the teams are going to be willing to go to is going to be a, a real fun, a real treat. It's so cool to see how teams, especially, you know, uh, uh, collegiate teams, adapt to one another because collegiate is such a huge space. Mm -hmm. But these teams are all also local, kind of in the same area yeah, as yeah. each other, right? So, you know, maybe they have some insight on how the other teams play. Maybe they don't. Maybe this is the first time and we'll see some wild picks come out for League of Legends later, right? You know, uh, yeah. I want, you talked about it earlier. I want to see that Blitzcrank. That Blitzcrank oh. jungle. That'd be, that'd be hilarious <laughs> right, to see. Look, look, a caster can dream. A caster can dream. We get a new patch, hopefully new things. We can dream. Valorant, I think the biggest thing that I'm hoping for is just we we do get to see that preparation yeah. really come out. That's my one ask. When you see that in a team and it shows that they really, really care about these events, that they're willing mm -hmm. to put that kind of work in, especially with things like Campus Clutch going on with Seaval starting sure. up pretty soon or having even been instituted in some of the regions thus far, it's a fantastic opportunity for these teams to show not just what they've learned about themselves, but like you mentioned, they've probably played each other in a couple of these turns <laughs> because all of them are region-locked, or region-based, I suppose, sign up for the region yeah, that yeah, you yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Right? They've probably played each other in their own uh, respective regions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, C-Files uh, going on right now. The, mm -hmm. the, the Riot-sponsored collegiate uh, event, right? You're so, not signed up, sign up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think sign up is close, but you know. <laughs> well, for the first tournament, but there's there's two more. So, you know, get in, on, get in on that as well. More networking, more opportunities for all these <laughs> collegiate students. But you talk about preparation. The other word I want to keep an eye on, uh, coordination, right? Mm -hmm. Because... We talk about preparation. Different schools are going to have different levels of prep, uh, preparation just on what they've been able to put together, the resources available to each individual school. But coordination can happen anywhere, right? <laughs> you get five crazy people. Maybe they can only get together two hours a week, but they just play in sync. They can roll over anyone. Hey, I mean, it throws back to just some of the, the older, really, really strong collegiate Valorant teams. Sure. There, there have been a good few. They just had pug chompers that just on the same oh, page. Yeah. And on top of that, we, we talk a little bit about, you know, maybe not preparation, but adapting on the fly, even in a that one too. game series, even in a one map series, is super important. You know me, I'm a nutcase for a good mid round call. Mm -hmm. Seeing whoever's in game leading for these teams, be able to kind of take the game by the reins and get a good read on the opposing side right in the middle of the round or in the middle of the match and make that critical change to what, whether it's their setup Definitely. or their executes or their retakes. That's incredible to me. There's there's so much adaptation that has to happen in the minute and 40 seconds every single round ends up being, <laughs> exactly. right? And then you only get, you know, at most probably 25. I mean, we can go to overtime, but mm. at most, generally speaking, 24. So you get such little time to think on your feet. It really comes down to being able to process just so quickly. It's, it's, that, it's that intuitive read of the game that comes with practice, and of course, that preparation you were talking about before. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're expecting a lot of big stuff out of these teams and seeing the, the strategic minds at work and really just, I mean, their brain's going to work. A lot of these students are in college and that's why we see some of those big playmakers. We've had mm -hmm. huge brains in the scene. I mean, Choi Boy, the very first to really like, I think shape shift collegiate Valorant into something new and really push it to a new level in terms of in-game strategy. And of course, like it, when you bring in local schools, you're not expecting that, but I think the level of collegiate Valorant, I trust that it absolutely is high enough Sure. And you look at games around the entire scene, I think Valorant is definitely one of those where you expect high level of play in college. Definitely. It's exciting. It's exciting, man. And we're yeah. not the only ones excited. We're going to take a look now at a package from Keats, who is telling you why he's excited for the Kickback Cup. I was behind the eight ball on gaming because I spent a couple of years, you know, working on my music, working on my video, my acting, all that. So when I started to get the millions of followers, I rewarded myself with allowing myself to game again. And once I did that, I realized I could professionally do that as a part of my career. Appreciate y'all being here. We're gonna play some Apex Legends. Yeah, I thought you had to be insanely good. However, nowadays, 
if you're gaming with personality, that can set you apart from so many different people. Gaming and streaming is becoming such a essential part to entertainment these days. People in the chat. You're always going to hear that there needs to be more diversity corporately in the gaming world. Economically, gaming is not cheap. You know, you know the PlayStation 5, 500 bucks, like it's 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 a lot. Game is is with experience, and if you're not able to practice at an earlier age or for long durations of time, that can set you back. You know, behind the eight ball. If you don't play football early enough, you're you're losing out on that experience so I think that gaming economically the black culture needs kind of like help and assistance to be able to compete at the mass level to be a successful player you have to see it as a job when it comes to gaming and the repetition black people are not afraid to work hard and that's really all that's required to be successful in gaming you see how much money they're throwing at these players for these tournaments 100k 200k you better work I think my biggest accomplishment right now tying on into all this is being able to host the HBCU Esports League with community. It's really cool to be in the community that is paying kids to show up and be on stream and being promoted and out there being paid to play. I couldn't imagine being paid to play 2K when, you know, that's what I do just to relax. So it's just a great opportunity. But what's up? I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Everybody, hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of info from Keith, and honestly, right, it does show that whole other side yeah. to esports, to gaming, right? Between content creation and not just content creation. I think that's one of the things that people just don't talk about in gaming in general. Mm -hmm. Is there? There's there's just regular jobs in it. Dude. Like <laughs> there's so many that go under the radar, and yeah, it's not like sure. it's not the the stuff that you think of when you do it, but you're absolutely involved. And I can, I can really attest at any one of these companies, regardless of what you're doing, if you're a janitor at one of these facilities, <laughs> you are ingrained in esports. Absolutely. And I mean, content creation is a great way to get started in that. Even just streaming in your spare time Definitely. is good experience on the technical side of things. Yeah, and you know, uh, Keith there was talking about like personality a lot of the time can just snowball you through not just the esports space but gaming in general There's a lot of different ways to get involved with esports sure you can be a player if you're cracked like you know the guys we're gonna see in just a minute <laughs> playing uh it, maybe you're not so good at the games and you have to sit here and talk about them instead you can do that too but also so much work behind the scenes you know we got a whole amazing production crew here we there's so much on uh behind the scenes at riot and also at community get or at uh, community the the amazing people who are putting on the kickback cup for you let's go ahead and take a look what they have to say about this amazing event My name is Ryan Johnson. I attended Oakwood University. I'm the founder and CEO of Community Media and also co-founder and partner of The Kickback with the mission to um, increase minority representation in the esports and video game space and also future-proof diversity in that space through competition and careers. Gaming is a huge STEM pillar within the public school and private school system. How do we raise the awareness so more specifically black gamers know that there's opportunities to make money to get jobs in this industry as well. The reason you do not see a lot of people of color in STEM-based careers and or in the gaming industry as a part of like the STEM ecosystem is really those who have access to consoles versus those who have access to computers. This for us was like an issue we realized in Atlanta. We've been able to build out esports labs to then get them computers. These developers that are looking to hire minority talent that have STEM-based backgrounds. But before all that can happen, you know, people of color need to know that this is actually a thing. Community media and HBC Esports is helping to lead that diversity from a cultural standpoint to make sure that we, as a black culture, we can put our stamp on esports and gaming. My name is Warren Davis. I'm the CFO for Community Media Co. Now it's time to take it to another level. And to do that, you need to have all the voices that make up the community heard. And that's what community is looking to do. One of the biggest disparities in the industry is access. Chris P.A., uh, one of the co-founders and chief marketing officer for community media. I attended North Carolina Central University, Eagle Pride. Kickback essentially formed you know, a group of students. Now they could have one-on-one -on -one conversations with gaming executives within the industry. Um, they can also compete and play live to win scholarship money. One thing that we do on our nonprofit side is like parent education. Um, where you know we're teaching the parents the ins and outs of the industry at the same time that we're teaching those students. So we have a career readiness program for the students, and we also have a career readiness like a workshop for the parents as well, so that they can you know learn what their students are doing and then the opportunities that exist within the industry. 
the hope is that you know seventh eighth ninth through twelfth graders are like wow i didn't realize that i can get scholarships to compete in various esports at universities and that's kind of like the big lens of what we're hoping will happen at the kickback we see like this new shift and new ecosystem being developed like literally right before our eyes All right, welcome back, y'all. Oh, 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 oh. Got all the players all lined up on stage. The game should be starting relatively soon here. But I appreciate the word from the community, especially I, I think what they're hitting on about access is really huge. Getting access to this PC lounge and the fact that community is building them out mm -hmm. for these schools, for these students, for these people is, is absolutely phenomenal because it puts them on kind of the level playing field that you need to compete, especially in PC esports like a Valorant, like a League of Legends, and really get your, your name on the docket in that respect. Yeah, absolutely. And access to the scholarship money they were talking about too, right? Yeah. There's so many scholarships in collegiate esports these days, you know, things that definitely... A little bit of, <laughs> little bit of dough online today. Yeah, you know? A little bit of dough, 5k in our prize pool today. And uh, it, it's so cool to see community and, and, and the entire collegiate esports scene grow like this and put effort into reaching out and building, not, pardon the pun, but a solid community. <laughs> I mean, that, that's exactly what it is. And it, it's in every single respect. I think diversity has really been championed, especially in collegiate esports. And that's really fantastic to see. So events, again, like this, giving players, you see how much fun they're, they're having they're with the cameras. Ready, like, this is an opportunity just as much for them as it is for the scene as a whole. Oh, absolutely, dude. These guys, you know, it's especially Valorant players, they're going to be putting clips on oh, Twitter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be seeing clips <laughs> from this event for the next week on my team, uh, my, my timeline on Twitter, dude. So it's super exciting. And we are getting pretty close to getting into the game here. Just wanted to make sure that everybody was ready, that everything was seamless and perfect for when we actually get into this. Because again, 5K on the line, you don't want anything to go wrong. Absolutely not. There's also a lot of pride online for how close you are to one Definitely. another. You're going to be hearing about this for a long time, dude. I want to see who gets excited on that stage, right? Who, oh, who's yeah. who's, who's going to stand up? up? Who's going to stand up and start uh, uh, getting some some of that personality we were talking about earlier with uh, with Keats? I'll tell you what, even if it wasn't, you know, with you casting Collegiate Valent, I've had my, my fair share of Collegiate Valent lands, and oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just rubbing, my, no, rubbing in my nose real Nobody yeah, gets thanks. loud like Collegiate Valent. Valorant players <laughs> get really? loud. Oh, West Virginia, dude, West Virginia goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if they can rival it. Yes, yeah, sorry. Let's keep that energy heading into the first game of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Howard versus Morgan State University. All right, Paul, we brought this up. We're starting things off yeah, on a set. Let's start breaking down these team compositions. We're, we already got Morgan locked in here. Is that the Yoru? Oh. <laughs> oh, boy, we're talking about spicy picks, how you can pull out anything on a set. But that is, that is Yoru Fade Sky. No, no primary entry. Giga right? Chad. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> I love Collegiate Valorant so much. Over on the other side, we do get something a little bit more traditional, though. Still a lot of fun. You I got your brimstone. I did get my brimstone. <laughs> we'll talk about dialed in just a second. But I do love this tie sheet pick. I love that they're bringing out the KO. Initially championed by Ryujin of uh, of UCF was actually one of the, way oh, back the, the OGs to play this character specifically on Ascent and showed us the power that some of those flash lineups can really bring to the collegiate scene. I'm excited to see what Taishi can do and really kind of show how far that character has gone. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a, uh, it looks like it's gonna be a little bit more of a, a standard comp. This is gonna be flash heavy Select for both sides agent. though, right? We got yeah. Sky on both teams and then a difference of uh, that, that Yoru versus the KO, but both And another teams blind on Sydney as well. Yeah. Exactly. Gonna have a lot of opportunities to play fast, right? Especially for Howard University, those brimstone smokes, right? You throw all those smokes down all at one time. You th you chuck flashes onto the site, and then you have someone rushing on in. It's gonna be an exciting game. That is the difficulty, though, right? You're looking at the comp on the right. It's kind of a flash in the pan. Mm. The brimstone doesn't offer much late in the round. Once you run out of smokes, that's it. They don't regenerate. The omen, if they can time them out with this composition a little bit more, they will have more utility heading out yeah. later in the round. I do see the struggle point, though, being Fallen versus Nitro. Entry Fragger versus Entry Fragger. Yoru versus Chet. The Yoru's job, definitely a lot harder. A much more technical set of abilities. You need to be absolutely in tune with them if you want to get maximum value. Absolutely. And, and not only in tune with your own abilities, but Yoru 
a lot of the time is someone who requires team coordination. You need that distraction. You need your teammates making a lot of noise so that you can slip in under the gun, under the radar with uh, your teleports, with your clones, and fool the enemy team. That's right, we got Morgan State though, starting out on the defense. This is, I think, pretty ideal for them considering their composition. Like we said, I think on defense they have that opportunity. If they can hold off that initial big brimstone push that you were talking about, they'll have opportunities later in the round to find some big wins. Starting off though, a default for Howard. Not leaning towards either side of the map is what that means. A default, uh, generally you spread out, you're looking for information, you're looking for holes in the opponent's defense or the opponent's setup. Both teams right now are thinking the other one is going to go for something crazy on the pistol. That's what this slow play means, right? You see that trademark from Howard positioned outside of B main. No contact early. Now they're pushing up. They're going to go straight for it. Couldn't quite stop the chamber teleport. Going to be able to get out of dodge now. Three players heading to the site. Still fake over on A, too. So Morgan State, they're not quite sure where to go right now. Can't get stuck. Otherwise, you're going to give the, time, the opposing team time to rotate in, and they're stopping that from happening. Basically goes down, trades across either side. Spike will be planted, but at what cost? Oh, well, cost of at least two spike players already. 3v3 is Sydney. Gonna make it even more expensive. That's a spike down. Not able to get planted there. Howard now, they just have to work their way up the middle of the map and try to reclaim that, but they're lacking information, health, players. You know, it was a bold first round from Howard. They start out with a default, and I thought, you know, they're just going to look for information. Seconds left. But then I see two brimstone smokes get popped on the A site, and they start using the Skybirds. So what they were really trying to do was throw a fake. They were trying to use utility sure. on A to send the other team towards A and then take B while they're gone. Morgan State did not bite. Not one oh bit. Butter, now there's a chance trying to come in two versus three, but the <laughs> angles for the defense here, just too good. They were outnumbered. Yeah, beautiful flash from Nitro at the end there, too. That's what we're talking about, though. They, ran, they used two of the smokes on A for that yep, fake. They didn't go. have the resources for the retake there. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, we were talking about the Yoru, too, right? Um, how it requires team play and coordination. Already seeing that from Morgan State. So two works. players baiting out for the Yoru, uh, the Yoru who was hiding back site. Easily gets that flash to two players up on uh, highway. Not a struggle for Morgan to walk away with that pistol. Now they'll get their awesome. anti-eco. They're going to be able to buy much better weaponry in this second round. Howard doesn't look like they're going to go for a force. I think that's the smarter call. I'll find you. Second round, though, we should explain. There is an economy to the game. You exactly. win, you get more money. You lose, you get less. More money means more guns. Less money, less guns. Pretty straightforward. Saving it sometimes, though, is a good option. That's what Howard are doing right now. They didn't spend any money this round, so they will have money in the next round. Morgan State did spend a little bit, so they're at a slight advantage here. They've got those submachine guns that Sydney is using already to tear through the health bars of Howard. Howard struggling here to get through tree. Keep in mind, if you manage to plant the spike, you do get a little bit more of that cash. So that's one of the objectives for Howard in this save round. They want to get that spike to the site, but instead it's going to be flawless. Sydney picking up four. Nice little, nice little four piece chicken yeah, nice for him. Just, just a quick little appetizer. You know how it is. <laughs> Cleaning up that anti-eco. You do expect some big wins from them there. I will say, I like the rotation from Morgan State. They read that pressure coming up cat really, really well. Yeah. Rotated three players in that kind of surrounded a little pincer maneuver. So no matter where Howard went, if they continued to push forward, they were absolutely toast. Now Howard in the third round are going to be able to buy full rifles this time. It'll be a bonus for Morgan and one that they have a decent amount of weaponry in, right? You know, they, they got through that second round flawless, so they'll be carrying a lot of those specters, those submachine guns, as Dor was saying earlier. That means a they can do a decent push. bit of damage to Howard's economy. A slow lean A to start for Howard. Howard dodged the fade reveal. None of them got seen by it. Biscuit just now is going to get that information, but is it too late? The execute comes out. Smokes are down. Sky should be sending flashes in in a moment. But Howard are stuck out here in lobby. They have not made the push yet. The flashes come out in a moment, but they've had time to rotate. Morgan State, Epscon, they leave. They will retake the site later. 5v5 retakes are hard to pull off. We need to see that coordination from Morgan State, but they've done a good job of that thus far. The question is, how are they going to gather information on the site? They've already used most of their fade utility, so it's going to come down to the sky instead to gather a lot of that info. Here we go. The Yoru's got a TP deep in sight as well. Keep an eye out. There it is. Teleport out. One nice. kill for the Yoru. Out in main. Looking for a second in lobby. They'll cut out Last in the smoke. It's difficult. Stand. Nitro. Phenomenal entry fragging by Morgan State. Enabled by that utility exactly like we were talking about. They set up for that retake. He threw that teleport into the corner of the site early. 
and it paid off in spades. You know, you can gather info with the haunt. You can gather info with guiding lights or the the trailblazer. You can also just chuck a Yoru at the problem, right? Have him flash TP in. Oh look, everybody's blind. Here's where they're playing, guys. Uh, <laughs> let me calm that to all my teammates real quick, so we can get in very clean. A bonus round one for Morgan State. They're going to start off 3-0. Howard are going to be out of money again. So yeah, we talked about it. A bonus round is where you save those kind of half yep. expensive weapons that they had in the second round, and if you win with cheaper weapons against more expensive weapons, your economy blows out of proportions. So Morgan State has currently put themselves up at a massive Very lead good. economically that they should down. be able to snowball. But even if not economically, I think, like we were talking about earlier, that preparation at a collegiate level is really, really Ooh. showing for Morgan State. This is aggressive here. Nitro using the dimensional drift to gather some early round info. Clears Even out their the spawn, dude. <laughs> of A lobby gets into their spawn. I mean, you you know at this point, right? If you're Morgan State, you are 100% certain of where Howard are on the map. You know that they're right over here towards A. Gotta be careful, Biscuit. Don't drop the gun. Okay. One for one actually favors Howard here. You're going to be able to recover that better uh, firepower in the Vandal and then retreat back to the team. Oh, do they expect Nitro? Oh, he, he got found out. I had to TP back. Fortunately, Nitro did have that TP back. So, boy, that Yoli prowess. Dialed her. Yeah. Nitro, one bullet, one kill. A nice and easy tap. The remaining player's still there. A second. Do we go four for four? Looking to peek off the clone. Clone shot reveals one player. Still understands that there's one out mid. Nitro Time knows that this is a two on one, but it's difficult to play without a little bit of tomfoolery. Nitro spraying away at the corner. This is such a difficult angle for the Yori. Can't find the head. Gets shot at by one two players. Team out. Nice. No! Last Toma player catches him in the nick of time. It is one on one. Down, chamber on chamber. Mono. E mono. Oh, but Morgan State, they're going to have the read. There's no way you're going to cross all the way through mid to try and get back to A. He's got to go so fast. So Beast Mode in a perfect position to shut this down. Toba not able to make it to the site. All in all, pretty good eco round for Howard, though, right? <laughs> they say, they yeah. take down four guns. Keep in mind, every single gun you're going to have to rebuy, right? And as we go into this timeout, Howard, they're going to have rifles coming into this next I round. This. this is a great opportunity for them to set up and flip the momentum of this game on its head. Now, timeouts, super important in Valorant. We talked about it earlier. You got about 15, 20 seconds before that round to figure out what you want to <laughs> do. Timeout is 60. That's about yeah. three times the normal time that you have. It is hugely important for these teams, especially on moments like this. You talked about how much more money Howard are going to have in this round. And if they lose it, that's it. They're going to be back to zero. So this is really their opportunity to strike and get back in this game. And you can see that Howard, despite being down 4-0 right now, have some really good ideas. Yeah, I absolutely. especially want to point out how they swung together in a like coordinated fashion on Nitro, right? Nitro posted up in a lobby, was picking heads off. The dude was just popping them like balloons. But then at the very end, you have your... Uh, you have Toba, who had an actual rifle. He gets his sky to swing for him and then takes the better advantageous fight. You sacrifice what would have been a lost pistol anyways. It doesn't really matter. To actually give yourselves a chance to win that round. Yeah. Numbers, I mean, as nice as it is to, to eliminate players and, and tap them down one at a time and get hit <laughs> clips, it is way safer to just outnumber the opponent. Oh, yeah. Right? Absolutely. And so if you can find angles to do that, like we just saw Howard do. It's going to be huge. Let's take a look at Howard, though, and their setup. This is, like we said, a pivotal round for them, and they're breaking out a default. You can see the spike you want has to been play. left in their spawn. Play. Throwing three players towards A, a couple towards B, a little bit of pressure in mid, just trying to control the map with these long-range rifles. And now that we're going into round number five, too, ultimates are starting to come online. You have the Tour de Force already used by Howard. That's a lot of firepower that you don't have to buy, right? Orbital Strike also going to be available in case Howard feel like they need a large zone of control, they can just blast away at where they believe Morgan State is standing. And no information being given away by either side. Morgan State have been happy to poke and prod around the map, but because they know that Tour de Force is online, they've made a conscious decision, hey, we're not going to peek any of these aggressive angles. We're yeah. not going to try and gather information. You can push into us with your fancy sniper rifle <laughs> and see how it fares at about three feet away. Right now, Tober just... Lurking on the other side of the map, too, hoping that someone from Oregon State a decision would push out B main. Though. Yeah, I mean, after after 40 seconds of standing there, you got to try and regroup with the team. It's just going to be a full blown execute A here. Howard, earlier they were able to get onto this site without losing anyone. This time they're going to have to go up against the fade, though. Doesn't seem Sit great for nice and 30 seconds left. They're down one, set up 
I love seeing rounds go this way. I love seeing college being willing to wait this long to push it to the edge. One player on site. What kind of work can Biscuit get done? Unfortunately, not much. Kenny Cosmic will be traded out, though. His ball jumps up to the high ground, taken out. It's going to be a quick retake this time. 14 seconds. They're looking to stop this spike from going down at all. Spike is initiated. Three players versus three will be how it's played. But with that brimstone hole on the board, it's that much more dangerous. And say, Beast Mode even is just going to get in early. Yeah, and I mean, now it's all down to Tai Sheet. I don't think there's going to be much of a chance. Right. That's a pretty nice first shot here. Knows that they're both playing up top two. Going to use the flash to try and reposition. Oh, almost caught the omen. Almost. The flash not quite landing either. It's so close. But Sydney's going to be able to swing on that. It, it, it tells you that minor lack in conflict. They threw the flash out. and did The flash was perfect, right? They caught the omen on the drop. But the second they took those first couple shots, realized they weren't on, they said, you know what? I don't want to try and correct my... my uh, spray control. We're just going to take it as it is. Went back behind cover, but I think that was the real opportunity is when they had the Omen on boxes and the sky flashed behind the wall, they had the isolated 1v1. And if those shots connect, it's a different round, but alas, Morgan State back up at 5-0. And Morgan State have just had a really good read of what's going to be the most annoying for Howard to play against, right? That's they go for such a, uh, a, a late execute onto the A site. Perfect opportunity to just throw some flashes, throw some bodies at the problem, disrupt that execute, make it so that that, you know, the earlier, when we saw Howard get onto the site earlier perfectly, 5v5, don't give him that opportunity again. Nope. Make it a little bit more messy, make it a little bit more chaotic, especially when you're, again, rocking with this uh, Yoru. You want that little bit of... Uh, uh, Je ne sais quoi, right? That, <laughs> that, 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 that you can't just make little French jokes when, when Chambers in the game. <laughs> I was talking about Yoru, though. That's all right. We got the game posture, you guys. You may have noticed we've gained some fancy new temporal abilities of stopping the clock at exactly seven seconds. Uh, that is not magic. That is, in fact, the uh, the magic of the movies or live production, either or. You know, I don't think is it still movie magic? I don't think so. I don't think this guy's that a cool. Movie. No, I don't think we're... One uh, day. Look, I know you're pretty <laughs> enough to be a movie star, but, you know, uh, I, I don't think this counts, unfortunately. I've broken my fair share of camera lenses just by appearing <laughs> on them. Don't worry. <laughs> Let's take a look, though. Howard, even though they don't have the most cash, they've got enough. You can see they've actually kind of forced a buy through here, and they are going to be pretty slim pickings. You see one player working with a sting here, but the reason why they want to take advantage of this round is because of the ultimates that are on deck. It's a tour de force, and, of course, a teleport for the Omen that are going to be up for Morgan State. Howard, though, I've got four big ones on deck. Yeah, absolutely. And keep in mind, while uh, you're not gonna, Balin's not going to have the perfect weaponry. He's got knives. <laughs> but he's got the jet ult, which is, is an economic buffer, right? One of those ultimates, much like the Tour de Force, where you just use the ultimate instead of a gun in a round where you want to save a little bit of money. So as long as Balin's hitting those headshots, getting the resets on the knives that you get every time you get a kill, uh, going to be just fine. And I think the answer for Morgan State is pretty clear, right? If you can disengage any of this, you're going to be in a pretty happy situation. For sure. If K ultimate comes through, that's going to help with their exec or execute the Sky ultimate. Going to do the exact same thing when she throws out the cabbages. The Brimstone ultimate, a little harder to avoid in the post plant. If you play retake, you do have to make sure you clear yeah. him out. But I think you'd rather play retake because you'd be dodging two ultimates versus just the one. It is definitely a personal call, though, for these teams. Well, an alt economy is important in Valorant always, but especially when you're down 5-0, right? So the <laughs> Question, the question for Howard isn't so much, can they win this round? You know, they have so many of, what, of these impact ultimates, round, or ultimates that can uh, win a round just by themselves. The question is, how many do they have to use to get that first win, round win on the board? Because you don't want just this round to give you a breather. You want the next one and the one following that too. So can we get away with just the Null Command from KO or just the Orbital Strike from Brimstone? Or are we going to have to use two, three of those impact ultimates and then possibly suffer in future rounds because of it? To me, that's really a question of nerves, right? Because you go into a round planning to use probably two of them, right? Knowing sure. what your opponent has on deck. And then it very quickly just turns into three, turns into four when the team starts panicking. <laughs> and it's really, especially, especially, especially in collegiate, where you kind of can see teams get a little bit more panic, get a little bit more sporadic. They, they don't quite have that that same... Oh! Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the, the capacity, just hold it, right? There is that little bit of pain. Gusto. But that, exactly. But we talk about it in two respects, right? In one, it's, yeah, they might pop things and it's panic, but they also have that flash in the pan ability, right? They have that emotional capability to really turn up when they need to. And for me, rounds like this are exactly where that begins to show. 
gonna be exciting too. I, I really want to hone in on this Yoru play for a second. Here. It's been really good. Uh, Nitro, I think. Take a look at the scoreboard if I was reading it right. I think he's ten and four right now, going in around that's five. Criminal. He's averaging two kills around. That, that, <laughs> that's hard to play against, right? And Yoru especially uh, can become a character where if there's a Yoru on the enemy team who feels like he's just getting away with everything, it's so annoying to try and pin that guy down. He can teleport, he can fake out, he can, you know, dimensional drift. And when he's getting that many kills, you know, he's almost up to his second ult already going into round number six. So everyone's almost up to their second ult. This has been a bloody game ball. <laughs> Uh, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, a lot of ultimates on deck, and I think the nice part here for Howard is that it's not the end of it. A lot of times, sometimes, you will see teams kind of get one real big round of ultimates sure. to try and turn around the economy. Doesn't seem like the case for Howard. They're pulling out more than enough kills and eliminations that they'll at least get a second round. Should this all go south, <laughs> things are still all right. And as we mentioned, Valor, especially, especially, especially at the collegiate level, is a game that is so able to be turned around. One swing momentum, a half going the right way, a pistol going the right way, Absolutely. can really change the entire pace of the game. We're just figuring out a, a quick technical thing, guys. We want to make sure that Shout all out the players... Shout out our stage crew. Yeah, honestly, oh my goodness. You know, it's been, you know, through the uh, the eras of uh, human malware, as uh, <laughs> my, uh, you know, uh, some people would like to call it. Um, back to live events. I'm so happy to be back to live events. We got a crowd. We got an amazing crowd, by the way, out here with us today. So thank you all for sticking with us. Just to make sure everything is going flawless for these players and they don't have to deal with anything untoward trying to go through these games. Reminder, I, I don't really call this untoward. This is just standard for esports. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always say it's not a day in esports unless something goes wrong. You know, I, I was with the, the people working the stage last night. They tested those computers 20, 30 times. They played full perfect. matches on Of course it was perfect. perfectly. Yeah. Uh, it's just a, it's just the nature of it. Things are gonna break, but you know, shout out to the students. This is a good opportunity though for Howard. Sit yeah. back, chat, figure out exactly and, what's going wrong, and mentally you know, reset. Like this happens in every every esport, right? There's always pauses for stuff like this, and it, 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 you get stage experience, which is so cool to get as a collegiate esports player, right? Stage experience. We're back in oh, the we're game back. now, guys. Let's go. Let's give Let's it up for these quick two. round. How are going? All right, Howard want to use those execute ultimates. They use an ultimate. They use the Sky ultimate to get in. They have popped everything early and thrown the kitchen sink proverbially in at this time. They still have not managed to shake down Pepperoni. How? Oh, no way. Okay. It would have been so wrong if Pepperoni got out of that. All right, they find the kills they're looking for. They are up four versus three. They have the Brimstone ultimate to open the skies upon Morgan State should they need to, but Morgan State are to give this one up easily. Dimensional Drift, this is the big key, right? So Nitro's getting all of this information for free. He's spotted the two players lane. He's already going for the flash too. He's just gonna go for a potentially quick swing. Baits them with the Yoru clone too, and it's taken so much space for Morgan State. Most important part is he spotted out where the Brimstone is, and they have to kill the Brimstone. That is rule number one, or end the round really, really, really fast. But let's see likely right now. Two kills quickly going down for the defenders, who hold their ground boldly. Now two versus one. Brimstone Ultimate still on there deck. Is. There, there it is, Orbital guy. Strike comes out. This is gonna stop the defuse. They don't manage to stick half. One versus one, it oh, is a second. No. Well, you know there's an Ultimate there. Nitro, you've been playing so well. <laughs> No way. You know, I was just about to start asking, all right, does Dialed have lineups I, I, for this? I feel like, like with the Molly? Look, look, I feel like we're allowed to flame Nitro because Nitro's been playing so well. We've also been praising Nitro so much that there is no excuse that to get caught by two people. It's one to try and like get half the spike. Like that was understandable. Uh -huh. But Nitro going down is wild, especially with the level of play that they've been bringing out. A huge opportunity for Howard, but they had to spend big for it. We talked about coming in and those nerves really getting to you and saying, you know, what, we're just going to throw everything at the one round. But now they're down in ultimate. Oh, boy. Catch them. Howard finally get a round on the board, too. That'll be good for not only their spirits, but their economy. They're going to be able to buy again. And just go for another quick execute. I love this change of pace from Howard, right? They've been sitting back waiting. It's given Morgan State a lot of time to adapt and read where these hits are coming out. Now that Howard's going much faster, it's looking so much more competitive. There's some more at Watching smoke. Two after round for the time being. They're going to use the From the Shadows just to go ahead and spot out who's where. Four versus five, though. This is a very, very, very hard retake. The it's the same teleport as earlier. Oh god, watch your backs. Flank two, gotta watch the sky come around. Did get spotted by the trademark, so Howard should know that there is a sky trying to assail from the back line. 
Teleport doesn't come in for the Yoru. Beast mode and Sydney though is a great entry. 3v3 now. Sydney cleans up another. The flank is the only thing they have to worry about. But now it's Toba versus two. Swings wide on it. Can't stop the defuse. And it's Beast mode cleaning up a third for the round. As Morgan State finds the defuse, turn that score up to six to one. It was a fantastic execute by Howard. I have got to tip my hat, especially Ballin. Ballin has entered on that side a few times now, but started to understand where the fade was playing and changed where they peaked, specifically to take that fade on in the 1v1 yeah. peaking out of smoke. Found a huge win for them, but unfortunately, Morgan State and those retakes are just too much. Just an even better <laughs> execute, right? Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, an right? even better retake, right? Um, I, I especially want to highlight how they swung the players on Hell, right? You have the, 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 uh, the one player who drops me, off to the left, takes a lot of that aggro, a lot of the attention, and it draws just enough attention to where the Omen was able to drop and find the perfect timing. Now, Howard, yeah, they're, they're struggling for their economy again. Beast mode, able to TP away. That's one of the benefits of playing Chamber. You see too many players, you just run. The economy for Howard, not great. Kind of working with breadcrumbs here in terms of weaponry. It's not going to stop them, though, as they push on in. Rifle immediately take you down. They're using those numbers like we were talking about. 4v4 now as the Fade Ultimate comes in. It's going to make things real hard for the attackers. 3v4 is not easy, even when you have better weaponry. Oh, couldn't quite catch the KO either. Typhon, or Tys, uh, Tysi. Yeah, I can't speak to him. Oh! I mean, we're watching some shots connect for Howard. There what a go. round! On Eco, no less. That go. was Sheriff's and a dream for them. That was really And they well made done. it work. It was numbers. It was great peak timing. We saw three on one after three on one. That initial kill onto Dial was what really set the Dial tone for me, if you will. <laughs> They came out, outnumbered them, used those sheriffs. You don't even have to hit the headshots at that point. You just light the guy up, push on the site, pick up the weapon, and snowball that one weapon pick into another, into another. The fact that they managed to outlast the entire fate ultimate on Here. top of that Here. made it that much more difficult Here. for Morgan State. A huge swing round for the attacking side. And I loved how Howard sent, you were talking about Ballin's entry, they sent Ballin all the way back toward mm -hmm. the defender yeah. spawn, right? To just play inside the brim smoke and try I mean, to catch... I that's where Pepperoni's been the entire time. Pepperoni keeps trying to escape out that back and, exit. And Nitro keeps, like, uh, trying to swing through the brim smokes a lot of the time with those aggressive flashes. Mm -hmm. So even though Ballin doesn't get a pick there, it's just so much space created, right? You get a lot of opportunity to breathe so the other three Howard players can run to the site, take that advantageous fight, pick up the rifle, and win from there. And we do talk a lot about space, but it is one of the most important concepts in Valorant. Definitely. Also called map control. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, when it's smaller, smaller scale, you talk a little more about space, map control, a little bit wider of, uh, of a metric. But overall, it's how much area your characters and your abilities are able to control and have information on in the map. Especially when we talk about map control, that's why we see people run out and do what we were calling defaults earlier, sending players out to multiple sites, looking for that information, because the more you know, the more of the map you control, the better informed decisions you can make. Absolutely excellent play. Howard still a ways from a comeback. But they are Don't on call their way. You know? Well, and you know, Looking forward as we have uh, a brief pause here, um, it looked to me like Morgan was starting to run low on cash, right? Uh, they, they, they had three players who could buy pretty comfortably, but I'm wondering... I got used to them having trust funds, I'm going to be honest, I forgot <laughs> about it. I thought you, the guns just spawned in their hands. Exactly, right? <laughs> uh, and, and I'm... When you run just the chamber, you only get that one economic buffer in the ultimate, right? Yeah. So just the tour de force, whereas uh, Howard have had a little bit more, you know, they got that extra blade storm on top of it from the jet as well. So uh, I'm wondering if that tour de force is up and they're actually going to go for more of an economic force, right? Where you just buy everything that you can and try to win the round in front of you. Or since they have, you know, a 6-2 lead right now, if they'll maybe play a little bit slow, hey, we can afford to give up this one round and then play to finish out a really strong defensive oh half. Oh my goodness, they are broke. That's incredible. Yeah, that I didn't think that was after like the first four <laughs> rounds. Once you win an e or once you win a bonus round, it's just like you're, you're set for life. And you know, uh, it's worth noting while Howard or I'm sorry, uh, Morgan were able to win a lot of rounds in a row. A lot of them were close, right? Yeah. O other than the bonus round uh, or the anti eco rather, um, they weren't keeping more than one, two guns in most yeah. of those rounds, right? So the, the, the money doesn't pad up as fast as it maybe could have. Especially in a game as bloody as this, like you were pointing out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it'll be interesting to see how that swings back. 
Good Th ultimate there, usage, you know, you said don't call it a cut. This is absolutely the, like, it's this is prime. It's, it's on its way to a comeback. It's not quite there I yet. Mean, it's still 6-2. <laughs> we're like, we've got the flint next to the fuse, and we're striking it profusely like we've never done it before. You ever watch the people uh -huh. on Survivor, like, try and light a fire sure, for the sure, first sure. time? Oh, it's so. like that. Like, eventually it'll happen, but it's not 100% sure. If it's a little, it's a little too, like, humid outside. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I must say, the weather here in Atlanta. Oh, it's phenomenal. so nice. I come from Arizona. He's from Arizona. <laughs> it's, yeah. still, it's still 90 degrees there, man. <laughs> oh, it's so nice here in Atlanta. It's been gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous all weekend. Not just for this, mm. but there's also the, the World's Tailgate tomorrow. Yeah. And then World's all weekend. Guys, there's events going on all over the place. If you're not catching up with them, absolutely be doing it. If you're in the Atlanta area, be sure not to miss out on any of it. Right's got it going, dude. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, it's not just about uh, uh, worlds to them. It's also about, you know, creating these opportunities for students they to be able to play so on the stage, sick. to be able to work Here together. We We're getting back into the game now, folks. That Tour de Force is, in fact, for online for Morgan State. Yes, as well for Howard, too. So, what Morgan State have done is what Paul was talking about. Bought as much as they could, and then put a sniper rifle in the hands of the chamber and said, Good luck. You want to so, Beast Mode has a lot play. of weight on their shoulders, specifically here. Howard, on the other hand, they all have weapons, and there's a sniper rifle on top of that, a little cherry on top, a little whipped cream, making sure that they've got the icing on the cake. So, Howard has stepped back and avoided that haunt again, that, that, that uh, orb that provides a lot of information from Fade, right? They avoid the haunt lineup. But little do they know, they're about to walk into the Tour de Force here. Flash doesn't quite catch, and Beast Mode gets one. It's still a decent scenario for Howard. They still have a weaponry advantage, but they didn't push in with their smokes. Yeah. In that little, even if you hesitate for one, two seconds, you see that allowed Beast Mode to peek out of the smoke. And it is that hesitation, it is that slim of a margin yeah. at this level. It's still pretty early in the round, too, yeah. right? So Howard, they can play back, sort of... They did spend their smokes, though. unfortunately. They did. They did They've spend got, their they, smokes. I think they have one left, and executing on one smoke is brim. It, it just feels bad, I'm speaking from experience. Interesting decision now. I think this is smart. I, I, I think, think so, too. I think they're going to go spin. through tree here, because you can try and overwhelm a singular player holding toward tree or garden, and that way you don't have to worry necessarily about all of the different angles just going straight on the side. Right? You can worry about getting that first gunfight win, and then it's a little bit more isolated, going from then on out. As well, keeping it a little closer Didn't range, avoiding here. that tour de force that is so scary. Pushing out now, looking to isolate that fade. They know exactly where it is. They play the same position every round. Yeah. Biscuit is in the same Four place minutes. every single time, and Howard are happy. They They've come to collect, shooting Beast uh, down through the box. Now three versus four. There's a lot of tools here for Morgan State. We've seen them do this before with the teleport and the sky flashes. It's gone bad, but Howard should be able to lock this one down, especially with the orbital strike. And the Seeker's back online already. Howard doing such a good job. They get all the information they could ever want out of that, too, right? They know Sydney's coming from up top. Nitro will be joining them. Toba watching this angle. Oop! Oop. Out the corner. <laughs> Fight hit it. Um, enemy Nitro remaining. managed to get one, but a good trade, too. And yeah, it's not going to happen. Pepperoni's not going to be able to win that 1v3. So yet another solid round from Howard. And because Morgan State forced that round, I think they're going to be even more broke than they were. I, I'm really seeing the difference between these two teams. Morgan State really do have that preparation that we were talking about with them. But Howard are bringing some really, really fantastic adaptations. Adaptation, we yeah. talked earlier about being able to outnumber your opponent, take those multiple multi-man swings, turn them into unfavorable gunfights for the opposing side. And they're doing that time and time again off the back of information, not that they're just gathering over one round, not that they're just gathering early, but from information that they're gathering earlier. Yeah. Right? You're saying, hey, the fade was here last time, so next time let's peek that with two people and take advantage of it. And, and Biscuit's not moving. <laughs> Biscuit, <laughs> still, this dude, is Biscuit's they're position. They're determined to hang on to Generator. Uh, it's not Generator <laughs> anymore, it's Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's how that works. Oh, boy. Another solid execute. Oh, okay. Well, I just oh, pick up one. That's that's a, wait, was that down. just through the smoke? Uh, I think there's actually a gap in the smoke. I think the oh. smoke a little bit too deep up in heaven, so a tiny angle that Nitro was able to get there. Yeah, look, he took damage back, right? It's definitely a gunfight there. Nitro just in the perfect range. Does destroy the trademark, too. No chance for a chamber to TP in or out. Morgan State don't have much in the way of weapon here, and Howard know that. They're playing far away. They're playing these long angles that are so difficult to take nice duels from. Ball as well. Play a smart play to help. Turns around, swings around for a third. See if they can top the 4K earlier from Sydney or match it. Pepperoni goes down. Won't be the case, but nevertheless, 6 4 ball. We've gotten even half. How to rocking it, dude. They're rocking it. Morgan State, after such a strong start, like you said, that adaptation from Howard.
has just been next level, these fast hits, especially toward the A site. The B site ones haven't been bad, but A site has just become such a, a, an Achilles heel, really, for our defending Morgan State team. So I think we're getting another timeout here. I want to see Morgan State adapt and move some people around the map. Maybe stick Nitro over there, right? Go for some more aggressive uh, A main control. They're giving up A main pretty much every single round, sticking to the sights. I they really like, like that retake game, and I, I think yeah. being willing to to at least throw something different out, not just because it hard counters, right? If the opponent wants to throw older utility sure. at a site and kind of, I'm going to use air quotes here and say, waste it all on an execute, yes, backing out is the right move because then you're going to have utility to take free of your own, and they're not going to have it to stop you right. from doing so. But it's like a game of poker. I always like to liken it to, right? An aggressive poker player isn't aggressive with every hand, exactly. right? An aggressive poker player is aggressive with a few more hands than an average player is, right? And it's the same thing in Valorant. An aggressive team isn't always aggressive. A defensive team oh, isn't well, always defensive. Your face. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, so sometimes you are. <laughs> but in this case, we have a team that wants to retake fairly often. But if you do it every round, I mean, poor Cookie is just sitting there. <laughs> Bleed, <laughs> free Cookie. Cool, dude. It is a, it's a tasty sight. It's yeah. a tasty sight when it's just poor Biscuits. Yeah, on it, man. Biscuits trying, uh, man. So I, I, I really think it comes down to maybe, uh, you know, we were talking about Nitro a decent amount. Put put Nitro up just with a little bit more close contact, right? Get some more early uh, early utility out, play for A main. They had, I think, the right idea with when Beast Mode had the tour de force, right? You saw a little bit more of an aggressive angle, but didn't quite stick to it on the reset. One of the things you can do with Chamber, uh, one of the reasons that Chamber is played so much is that you can I mean, take I can just an nuts <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can take an aggressive angle and then TP out and still play like a, a regular angle safely, right? Yeah. So you can take not just one, but two or even three sometimes fights before the defenders actually get a chance to go to the site. And that's one tool to not only take out players, but even if you don't get a, uh, an advantageous trade in terms of players, you can still get some of that yeah. utility or information. And I thought, I mean, Beast Mode played it really well. Te got the first, teleported out, swung wide, watch main. But that's where we're talking about the adaptation coming in, the fact that they rotated over to Catwalk, understanding that they only had that one smoke to work with. And so that long, nice angle that the yeah. chamber was on, all of a sudden, completely nullified because of the understanding in the mid round that we saw. Could also go for some uh, some ratty plays, right? It was, oh, it was, that's how you shut a team down. <laughs> you, oh, you just, really, though, yeah. right? You just post up on like an unorthodox angle. You get a judge get, get, your, get your one and done's out. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I've actually seen Howard State fully clear out wine yet, right? So you get like an <laughs> omen TP in with a judge for wine. You hear the execute come out. You just creep up behind him with a shotgun. Yeah, there, there, there's definitely a lot of ways to kind of break this execute heavy style, but I think just breaking the pattern of the retakes is, yeah. is really the name of the game here. If you do it every single time, they're going to know what you're going to do. They know you're going to retake. They'll hold off on that util a little bit more. They'll be ready for biscuit hiding behind generator, you know, as they have been time for and time sure. again. And I think it can come from a number of things, right? You can decide to change players on sites. You can decide to, to change how many players you want to send to sites, change which util is coming yeah. out, right? They've dodged that fade reveal like four times now. They know it's coming. Yeah. Well, and, you know, um, retakes are all fine and good, especially when there is... Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed when teams are bringing out retakes in Collegiate General. Like, that yeah, already absolutely. tells me you're at a certain level. But it's not just about like the 5v5 retakes. Mm -hmm. It's about like the 2v2 retakes, right? Getting a little bit more of that bloodshed early. And that was something, you know, we saw earlier, I think it was, I think it was round seven, right? Where Sure, uh, yeah, I'll pretend it. Was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll pretend it was round seven. <laughs> the, the round where Howard uh, went to the A site, but Morgan but it was pretty late in the round and Morgan made it bloody, right? They go for like a quick interrupt on the execute rather than like a full traditional retake where you wait until the spike has been planted, you get all your players there and then set up, right? So yeah. just getting a little bit more blood in, in, in the early round, right? Uh, before you actually have to go for the full retake. Mm -hmm. Now there's big opportunities for either side. Of course, this isn't the only game that we've got oh, going we got on. One. Of course, downstairs, we got Benedict College versus the University of Georgia. We'll get you guys updated on who wins that as soon as we get that information. But I trust that mm -hmm. game is just as exciting as this one is. Of course, and after then that. we get the winner of that yeah. versus the winner of this. I don't even know who's going to win this at this point. You know, if you asked me five rounds ago, I would have said, oh, OK, cool. We're going to get a Morgan State win. We'll be on time. Nice, quick, clean first game. Now, I mean, 6-4.
No, nah, they're looking to really soak up that broadcast time. <laughs> a, little me a little meeting before the team's handshake, just make sure everything goes to 26 rounds. Does it count as more stage experience? If, oh, uh, it absolutely yeah. does. You put that <laughs> on your resume. You get, uh, overtime, right? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> My boy's clean. Uh, oh, boy. You just love to see these players on the stage, too, right? Um, it, it, it's such a it's such a unique thing for college esports these days to be able to get this kind of stage experience. You know, much less this nice stage experience. The setup that like Riot had earlier, they have all like the world stuff with like the mm -hmm. cool broken down columns on the stage and whatnot. That was incredible. I love the two tiered setup as well. The two tiered setup is really cool. It's sick, right? Yeah. Um, it re really, really unique as well. But just. Just any stage experience in general, right? You look back at collegiate esports, uh, you know, five, th three ten, years, dude. Yeah, three <laughs> years. On, I mean, we, you know, a pandemic notwithstanding, um, <laughs> even even pre-pandemic, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it was it's rare to get something like this, so it's so cool. Is he got the hand warmers or is that an napkin? Oh my god, he's got the hand warmers. He's got the hand warmers. He's a gamer. And, you know, it, one thing, if you're not super familiar with collegiate esports, one thing, or esports in general, I should say, it gets cold on those stages, dude. It they, does. They gotta pump the AC to keep those PCs running smoothly. But the, I, I know. I see a player with hand warmers. I don't, I don't want to play. <laughs> give me, give me away, dude. I'm, I'm keeping my. That guy, you know, you know, he's about it. You're just gonna crush me. Yeah, the hand warmers mean that they mean business. They absolutely mean business. It's yeah. also like the hand dryers, you know? Oh man, it, go, it goes, it goes, yeah. I don't think I've seen those. No, like the, the hand quality of life uh, <laughs> rabbit hole goes goes deep, Paul. Well, we need to we need to have like full, that, that'll that be the next step, right? We'll just have like a full sidebar on the stage where it's just like, uh, like skincare product for the hands, <laughs> right? Like we'll get like some moisturizer, some lotion, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got yeah. we got to get somebody on that. Can we pitch that? <laughs> Nobody take that. That's Nobody ours. Nobody take that. <laughs> Trademark. TM. <laughs> on air. Boom. Done. Yeah, it's it's definitely official. I will say though, I, I mean, it's the same type of players that are really into every little detail. It it shows in the hand warmers, like we oh, joke yeah. about it. But it's the same players that are like shaving quarter grams at a time <laughs> off their mice. And it really is an art form, right? Like, they are mm -hmm. diving into the deepest stuff to make sure that their aim is absolutely on top of it. Like, for those of you that the, the uninitiated, maybe you play console, maybe you don't really have much of a gaming background, people get super into it, right? They've got different keyboard switches that they like, different uh, weights of that. Mouse pads come in all different sure. textures, fabric, solids. You, get, um, you can get, like, the Gamsu thing, right? Where Gamsu, uh, current... Um I think he's still playing Academy uh, in uh, uh, in NA, right? Mm -hmm. um, he gets like a measuring tape to make sure like oh, his that goes, keyboard. Oh, that goes, that goes way back. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I, I can talk StarCraft uh -huh. for days, man. There's some oh, old StarCraft, StarCraft pros. Yeah, they sure. measure out the monitor, yeah, the exactly. keyboard, the mouse pad, everything to just the millimeter. And it's all about replicability. It's all exactly. about being able to do it over and over. It's muscle memory. Exactly. And, I mean, that's the same reason why players are using aim trainers constantly. It's the same way you would prepare for a normal sport. You'd go out kick field goals, shoot free throws, everything needs to be absolutely repeatable. Even if it is in the in the flash of a moment, these players Definitely. are preparing for those moments. They are practicing that flick that you see them do to hit the sick 3K. There's a thousand flicks before that. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's athletics, right? Yeah. These guys are athletes, right? So it's, it's just so cool that we get to see them play. It's been so much fun so far. This game has been great. I can only imagine that the other one's going to deliver now. <laughs> uh, no, I, I want to know the score, dude. I want to get an update yeah. on that. Uh, hopefully, ho I mean, we'll find out one way or another who won. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always a question mark, too. When you come into collegiate esports, especially, you know, events with local teams and stuff, there is a big question mark about, like, is this going to be even? Because every once in a while, you, especially with local teams, sure. like, one, one team's just got, like, some radiant nutcase that's walking <laughs> around, bragging everything, and you don't know what you're going to get. What we've gotten today really has been an absolute master class a real show of skill for these yeah. colleges we've seen players pop off we've seen again something that i really love to highlight is that that real strategic mindset that colleges can bring to the table these students are so creative they're so smart and i think that like we have seen innovations right there's a reason why i mentioned the the reunion ko earlier sure. because, like he's a collegiate player but he does cloud nine training grounds for good reason and coaches over there for good reason like he had a good mind for the game he was playing it before it was cool and he played it super well and that's the kind of thing you get out of collegiate 
are these really insane creative players that bring fresh new looks to the game and seeing even just some really nice strategies being brought out by these teams whether it's retakes whether it's the excuse whether it's the mid-round adaptation it just shows me that they're thinking on that level that they're using that creativity that we know college valor to have definitely well and you know um something we're seeing more in collegiate esports in general but I, I find especially in valorant now is that like the top players are going to the I, colleges I, I, specifically i'll right? tell you what like, I, I think northwood could take on a fair number of tier two teams like, exactly <laughs> right well and you know uh you know guys like um like like truo right who yeah. played uh up uh for like btr who ended up doing some international collegiate events uh ended up playing like on immortals right yeah um the the, the, the line, pipeline's there the pipeline is there and the 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 Border, like the the barrier between collegiate esports and full tier one esports is not that thick, especially in a game like Valorant. It sounds like guys, we're gonna be getting back to the game. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Shout it's, out our tech crew. It's not. Oh, it is. I'll tell you what. I am glad that I just out. have to These talk. These people are absolute yeah. saints. Let's give it up for them as we get back in game. Morgan State and Howard six to four. This game has certainly gotten a lot closer. Oh, here they this go. This is what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted. Ready for it. Pushing in R. Howard. Oh, cheeky. The Yoru throws out a clone. Straight into the smoke. But they're not ready. They're not ready for the flank. In comes Nitro. Yeah. A first. Teleports out. They are lucky. It wasn't more than that. But it's already disaster for Howard. Howard should know that Nitro is still hanging around post-teleport. He did get his presence detected by the KO oh, knife. But they know now where they are. He's using the dimensional drift to check to see if Howard have left. Confirms Time all to two jump. players still hanging around. Oh, he's going to go for this play. You know it. There's a second teleport. Well, even he's not going to box him in. He's going to box him in. Yeah, they know where all the players are. They knew there were five sitting there. Oh, that's so he, cheeky, Oh, my dude. goodness. So, okay, what they've done. They've surrounded them entirely. They pushed the Yoru out behind them. So yeah. now, Howard thinks they're surrounded, the Yoru gets out, so not only do Howard think they're surrounded, but also Morgan State are completely safe! So Howard simultaneously can't move across the map because they think they're surrounded, but they can't push because the site's got a million players stacked up! The only buffer for Howard is that they still have an orbital strike, so left. they can use that aggressively, and they have a trademark too to catch when someone does eventually flank them. Here we go. I show with the important duel, but Biscuit wins it. Uh, it's getting Cosmic going down. Spike down A. A master class of a round from Morgan State. It could be upset though. Dialed. Turns it into a one versus two. This is a straightforward spike plant. Ten seconds left. Stick it either way. Do exactly that. The dog nice. comes out. So it's a short side, near side. Stops him. Sydney takes it over. What an incredible round by Morgan State. And another 1v2 that Morgan State get themselves into where they just don't risk anything. Paranoia into the Trailblazer for the Concuss right on time with the swing from Sydney. Really well done by Morgan State. We've talked already so much about adaptation. Last That's the exact round kind of adaptation half. I wanted to see from Morgan State, right? Playing for a little bit more of those cheeky plays, those ratty angles. That yeah, was yeah. one way that we said Morgan State could disrupt these fast executes from Howard. And now Howard going into this last round of their attack. They're going to have to play slower. They're going to have to consider our Morgan State posted up in these weird <laughs> Do angles. they? Do they have to? I mean, maybe a teensy bit slower, but... I know all their successful I rounds have also like come I from rounds actually, where they've just taken the train off the rails. They so. might just go for a fake here. Watch this. They did it in the first round. They're, pushed, they're making a lot of noise. Push them ball in. But remember, the spike isn't on this side of the map. So there's going to be some fighting. But the real push is over on the A side of the map. Ball is just hoping to get anything out of this, quite frankly. My only problem is now there's a KO marooned on the B side in Taishi, who is still stuck. But the fact that you're probably going to lose this player is huge because it did free up the entire A side, so you get a spike plan, but I mean, it, it is expensive, it doesn't even begin to describe how much. If Taishi gets out, wait, no way. There's no way. Taishi, getting, leave! Getting leave. lost in from behind. Look, Bro, that, they're taking have... nine years to take this A side. <laughs> yeah, <they laughs> this is an yet. eternity. But, but the bright side is because they have Howard it. are actually yeah. taking so long, Taishi is just wasting more time and theoretically more utility, too, from Morgan State, right? Like, look, there goes the haunt to try and clear him out in B main. Taishi, this is the FBI. We have you surrounded. Come out with your hands up. Taishi's still hanging around here, too. Are they just going to leave him? They're not gonna go what for the going to go for the He catches him the way. Destroyed. Oh my. <laughs> now you have to go back and try and fight him. Taishi, you waste so much time here. Nah, cue up, cue up the yakety sex. This round is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. 
Tobo with the kill at the Operator. Spike is down there. They still have the Orbital Strike. Howard have put themselves in the best position to win this round in the weirdest way humanly it's possible. all the way through Defender's Squad. And the Spike's halfway down already. Nitro's got to make something happen here. It's the first, it's the second. Orbital Strike comes out. They don't know where Dial is. Dial has to win this fight. Swings wide, beautifully timed. There's no time to defuse the spike anymore. Howard have done it in the most inconceivable <laughs> of ways. And I don't even think they expected the round to happen like that. <laughs> what a wild round. I love Collegiate Valorant, dude. What an insane round. I could not, you could not convince me. If we had paused after Balin died, right? You could not convince me that that was gonna Taishi go well was surrounded for by Howard. five points. Taishi was <laughs> over there for 30 minutes, dude. He, he took a cat nap in B main, man. Oh, I can't gotta make him pay rent. <laughs> yeah, truly, truly. Oh, man. All right, well, we've got a second half on our hands, and oh. it is a damn close one at and, that. And the smart pathing, too, from Taishi to not just, like, follow Nitro, but to go all the way around through spawn. That's another one of those, like, on-the-fly audible calls. That's just so yeah. good. Now, Morgan, they're going to go on their, er, yeah, their attack. Yep, second half, we switch sides of the map. So now Howard is playing on defense down five to seven, but the economy also resets. So all the pistols, or all the players, are working with pistols. Every bit of lead is gone. Nice. This is the opportunity, the first round, so important. Haunted is gonna force Tobo away. Just very disciplined utility for Morgan down. State. They're gonna be able to pin down Taishi. No cheeky uh, surviving in the middle of the entire enemy team for 30 there. seconds this time. Solid plant will be a 4v5 retake. Spike 3v5 play. retake. <laughs> That flashes in. Some decent trades coming out. Nitro, though, unfortunately, takes about 20 bullets to the chest and somehow doesn't die. The flashes are in for Morgan State. The duels, just one. About all there was to that. Nice piece by either side. It turns into a shooting gallery. It turns into just a, a Kovacs practice, but for the and teams, it's pretty straightforward. Now we've talked about retakes a lot. Retakes are especially difficult on a pistol round just because you don't have a ton of utility. Right? Yeah. Um, so it, it can be hard to enable yourself, especially when all of your players are trying that to get works. out heaven on the A site. It can be pretty hard to swing that. So Morgan State winning yet another pistol. They'll get themselves yet another anti-eco, is what we call the second round generally. Now this is still an important one for Morgan State because with the score being that it is, <coughs> pardon me, it wasn't a 6-6 six, six, half, 7-5. Winning that pistol round really springboards you towards that magic 13 number. Morgan State, if they can win this and another bonus, they win this. If you win two bonuses and somehow manage to lose a game, <laughs> you are that, that's impressive that in its be, own right. Yeah, that would be. Uh, I think he's the that. Yeah. I love how methodical Morgan are on their attacking side thus far. Look, the Flash clears out Cubby, then the Haunt clears out Tree. The Trailblazer is going to walk Nitro up. They're just taking space slowly but surely. It is a lot of utility that they're using, but it's okay because Howard really don't have much utility. Nice. So, nice little angle from Kenny, though. They're going to pick up a spectrum. That's a great swing. They're going to recover the weapon. 4v4 retake. Four caps. Weapon re disadvantage, but they got a little bit of to work with. That was their only flash, and they did push Howard. Though. That is... <laughs> a bummer. The KO might have something, actually. There might be a flash drive uh, in the back pocket. So. Uh, you can dream. We'll see. No? Uh, it, no. Maybe they just beat the old-fashioned way. Oh my, oh my god! No! You can't do that! Oh you can't do that! Well, the good news is we don't have to worry about that double bonus round thing anymore. Unless... No. Hey, shout out, you shout out my brimstone. That was... I, I love that pre-fire. That's yeah. a mean three fire, and it works really often. Especially when you have a classic. Look, you're not going to kill anybody further <laughs> oh, away yeah. than that. You might as well take that shot. And boy, was it a dire situation for Howard. Well, but you know, they, they have specters, it, they, too, They recovered right? all of them. Oh, yeah. They recovered four specters. This is great for Howard. I mean, they're only down two rounds right now. They should, for all intents and purposes, win this one, and then one This is now round, their bonus round. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, right? they, they have flipped this on its head. Not only was it a win, it was a gigantic win. Very much so. I don't even think, yeah, it, it looked to me like the uh, uh Toba, the chamber there, actually not even going to bother to do as much this round. Instead, he's going to go for a more deadly fourth round, right? Chamber, one of the great things about him, he's got that headhunter. Just makes it so economically efficient to play chamber. The guy's already got an it's unlimited like limit credit card. Why does he need to save money? Bro, he's just the rich boy, you know? Yeah. It's not fair that he gets to save the team money when he just has a bunch of money to spend, though. I don't know. I digress. <laughs> we'll talk lore later. This is the defaultest of defaults.
Bro, Morgan State. I mean, so Morgan are actually legitimately worried that someone might have crept out B main because yeah. they spent their entire team uh, looking for someone Fake over toward A at the early round, right? Um, it looks like they're pretty confident. Nobody's pushed out that. Now they are just going to conga line themselves onto the B side. Yeah, this is a parade in every sense of the word. Ball's going to get one. Get out. Nice and easy. Nice. What a quick peek on that second angle. Oh. Enrique. Looking for number four. They, they think they're on the site. They, they got to clear everything out to make sure. 30 seconds left. They are in garage, though, so. Yeah, there's nothing Sydney can do here, though. Not really. You got to get the 4K, though. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> got to enable Ballin's 4K. There's nothing better than acing on stage. Bro, Ballin was trying to go for the double updraft spray. Um, For anyone who might not watch so a ton of Valorant, Optimistic. Uh, if you're in the air, your weapon accuracy is uh garbage. Poo -poo. Yeah. Right? Not I, very not, good. Not, wait, wait, I don't know what you're talking about. Because when they're when I'm playing against them, they just do it and somehow my head disappears off my shoulders. Those are very fun clips to watch. Like, you see those on TikTok, oh, They right? just double up draft with a yeah. with Vandal. They're like, look at this skill shot I just hit. <laughs> I'm like, man, oh, I man. wish I had the power to manipulate RNG like that. All right, important round coming up here. Morgan State, they're going to be able to buy rifles. They need to win this attacking round. Otherwise, Howard will catch up to them despite the dominant lead. Morgan that's not just catch up. If it goes 8-8 eight, eight with this kind of economic lead, Howard are ahead. Yeah, by a lot. Like, veritably so. You can see why Morgan State are definitely being a little cautious, but they seem to I have a clear this. idea of what they want to do. Oh, he catches the Mohawk. I mean, that was a good shot. Too bad it was a clone. Yeah. Still, info's given. It forces the chamber to teleport backwards. It's actually a really valuable clone. Yeah. Oh, dialed. Okay, there's nobody close enough behind that trailblazer to punish the concuss there. Back comes out too, to just give more space. Keep Morgan State at bay. Try and give time to these retakes before the psychic comes out. I love this though. They've got the rotated. There's four players here. Even though Morgan State have a weapons advantage, they've got a decent amount of space. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of numbers. I think the unfortunate thing is that Howard are kind of running out of utility. Yeah, How Howard have spent a lot to try and stop this early, and if Morgan State push anything late, it's going to be pretty difficult. Ballin has to maintain this map control, and they're not quite able to, but the pressure alone here in Garage is going to be enough to at least keep Morgan State boxed in for a little bit. Well, I mean, we're down to 30 seconds. If Morgan State want to commit They're spread all about that. They got to go. 30 seconds right? left. Uh, and now you're worried that Ballin's out somewhere hanging oh, out. Oh, Nitro's out. Out of your main. They don't have an entry Nitro tracker. dies over on the other side of the map, right? If Toba sets up early here, it's game over. And Ballin's just hanging out in backside. This is a really hard hit for Morgan Front to pull off. Okay, still a smoke available. Make that two. Enough to execute the site. Back of the site. Ballin versus the remaining four left. members. Beast Mode, Peaks taken down, Ball stops it. Kenny Cosmic with one of their own, outnumbered now. Morgan State, two versus four, as Tobal looks pushing on the side of their own. It's just a Biscuit, and unfortunately, not on C, on B. It's B Biscuit, trying to save the day. I mean, one v four. I mean, the Seekers could get invested if you really want. Has the cure, Kenny not going for that, rather. Biscuit just took that shot, too. <laughs> uh, but here comes the double swing, yeah. yeah. Well done by Howard. Not risking anything after that first fight goes awry. And really well done in general. You know, we talked about map control earlier, Cameron. Yeah. And I think Ballin shows just why map control is so important, especially when you get into those late rounds. Because Howard were pretty much out of utility, right? Yeah. Um, if that site hit, or if that hit had actually come through B a little bit quicker, if Ballin hadn't taken that opportunity to push out that side of the map and get more map control while Morgan State were, you know, uh, showing that they wanted to go A in the early round, I think the timing where there works out a lot differently and Morgan State get a much better chance, but now they're running out of money. It's just gonna be a light buy for them. Try to buy up what you can in this round, see if you can deal some damage to Howard, but a, not a full Going commitment through. to spending their economy. Uh, really not great. Nitro. Careful here. I'm really gonna go in. Spots Careful in here. Spots an operator. Actually pretty valuable information. I thought last round, uh, Nitro's ability to force the chamber off of the operator angle was really good, and now I'm back. Just teleports back. Get the information and goes. I'm not sure information alone is going to be enough to see you through this round, though, with the weapon advantage that Howard have. At, at least Morgan State are going to be able to avoid the operator, right? Um, Especially when you're on, on lesser weapon range. Exactly. That has less range. Those long-range fights are just a nightmare to try yeah. and take against the operator when you know you got a stinger in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The less stacked me. site here, too, right? They're headed over toward uh, B. I don't know about less stacked, but you know. Well, now it's more Making stacked, team. actually. There. It's a good read by Howard, though. Sending the sky over to this B site. They'll have the anti flashes, and the flashes from the sky are going to enable the jet to peek. So Ballin is peeking off of the skybirds. Whenever they do come in, but they 
haven't. Morgan State threw the smokes out and didn't push. Oh no. Yeah, you hate to see teams get stuck like this. They either need to rotate quick or, or make the push happen. They'll go for it, but the smokes are down. Ooh, nice little swing there from Dialed. At least trades back for one, but considering this is a low buy. Okay, one there we remaining. go. That's what we need to see. Kenny coming back. There was, there was a little bit of an opportunity there for Morgan State to make that even more bloody. Uh, they just got caught out on some timing. It was a really well-timed swing from Dialed there to disrupt Morgan State. If Morgan were able to actually swarm their way onto the site, two out of four of the defenders on B had actually left. They thought it was a fake hit, and they were on their way to the A site, but Dialed buys them the time. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things buying them time to be completely honest, That's right? The rotate in from the sky. Just good read from Howard, to be honest. They had the numbers, they had the util. I don't think there's much more to it. It, it takes only one Brimstone Molotov to counter those two Omen Spokes <laughs> and all the flashes that came out. So, kind of self-explanatory in that regard. Howard, though, should have some weaponry in this round. Nice time. flash. Flash and off the angle. That Operator has a very moved, and they'll gain some map control over that. But again, it is still a full commitment towards A here for Morgan State. No map control on the other side. Ooh. Now it is, though. Beast Mode takes down Ballin. Well, now how are you? So no idea what's going on, right? You're yeah, you see the chamber start to move over. and then, yeah. At least it's the chamber, so you're pretty confident in this alert. So Kenny is going to stick around the A site. Look for something cheeky. That's a well-timed flash over the so many players there that you're swinging into. Well played. By Morgan State. That first skill by Beast Mode is so important. Spike planted. <laughs> Cheeky attempt from Taishi there. Is that? Is that bankable? Yeah. It didn't do any damage despite his crosshair being like. Uh, it whiffed by just a little bit, I think. Okay. <laughs> Knife out. Three five. Certainly not impossible. Three players suppressed. It's going to give them a lot of information on who's on site. They know there's a ton in generator right now. They start the swing. The shot starts to connect. Dialed with the first one. The flash out. Biscuit not caught by it, but they don't check out. Oh, Biscuit just looks at him as they pass the reload. So unfortunate. Biscuit, unfortunately, can't hit anything. The deflector shields are up for Howard. Fiery hits two, though. Turns it into a one on one, and Sydney's going to be able to clean it up. A hectic round is certainly a stressful one for the Fade player, but they managed to come out on top. We just saw, like, a biscuit with two very different spreads on either half of it, right? <laughs> we, we, we had a very plain uh, pastry on one side and then an everything bagel going on the other side. That was an insane flick onto the spike diffuser nonetheless, right? <laughs> uh, wh very well done at the you, end if there. If you don't get that second recovery. one, it's a lot worse. Yeah, yeah absolutely, right? You, you buy so much time for Sydney to actually find a more confident and swing too. Now look at this from the defense. Howard, a double operator setup. Oh boy. They are breaking open the piggy bank this time to buy two sniper rifles to truly lock down the map. And I think that's dangerous because Morgan State have played under the assumption that Toba is the only one with the operator and that if they flash him off, that's it. They're done. They've dealt with the all the sniper rifle they're going to have to deal with for the round. But this is an opportunity for Ballin to catch them out with a card up Spike their sleeve. Oh, Spike would have been hurt there, actually. So here comes Face the TP on the side. It's a full committal straight on A. Cutting Some points out. You can see Ballin holding tight on that B side. He's going to pull away, start the yeah. rotate process. Oh, well done. Now there. what do you do? I mean, the smokes are going to run out. There's five players here. You have to, like, entry frag as Omen, but Sydney goes down. They're kind of conga lining into the site one at a time. Yeah, once Nitro's out, you kind of run out of ways to get in. Exactly. Well, and that, that's one of the struggles of Morgan State's composition when you compare the, uh, the Yoru Duelist to something like the Jet, right? Jet is going to be able to create space no matter what, but Yoru is a... If, if you can get the right read on a Yoru and what they want to do, you can really punish where their TPs take them because Yoru, 30 seconds while left. you can set up a flash, sure, that can be turned. Ooh, it's going to be very difficult now to get past this second operator that you were talking about. Ballin set up beautifully here. The trailblazer are not going to clear him out. To be fair, though, the most powerful shot from an operator is the first one. one when the other remaining. team finds out, here, unfortunately, that wasn't this. Ballin's going to clean it up on a second. This Ten is seconds left. pretty straightforward win so far for Howard. They've used their economy to dominate. They locked them out of A beautifully so. Taking Nitro out of the equation just completely neuters the options here for Morgan State. But it's not to say Morgan State aren't keeping it close. Still picking up a round here and there. Howard are quickly racing towards that 13 mark, y'all. Unfortunately, Morgan State, they're not going to be able to do much with this round. They can try to invest the Tour de Force. Maybe if Beast Mode can find something early, then you can you know pick up a rifle, get some guns and look to swing that back, but still the double operator for Howard, a null command, orbital strike if things start to get dicey as well, and they need to go for a more confident retake. That works. Alright, let's see what we got, Beast Mode. 
Double lined up as well, some mid control. Mid has been, I think, criminally underutilized by both these teams. <laughs> Nobody's gone mid, dude, other than, <laughs> like, I think what? Literally, like, Taishid walks through mid for that flank, and that's pretty much all we've seen of it. Oh, look at this setup, though, from Howard. I kind of dig this. Like, they've sure. got the KO, the Sky, and the Brimstone all floating around. Howard has been a team that's kind of thrived off their yeah. mid round call, so having those three players very flexible where they can play the middle of the map and rotate either side, got your speed train. hasn't really been an issue. So now they know it's going A. Those three players are immediately going to make a shift towards that side of the map, and they're going to get there super quick. Seeker's invested to try and get Morgan State onto the A site. The smoke's going to keep them out, though. This is Morgan State. They, they realized all those Seekers went toward the site, mm -hmm. and they don't really want to walk into the three stack, right? Especially when they, they have lesser weaponry. They want to try and isolate one player, overwhelm them with just a player advantage, and then steal away that weaponry and play for more even fights later. Unfortunately, I think Ball's going to oh, didn't quite hit that first shot, but able to get away all the same. You know, I was going to say, the real struggle is actually just getting away from that second operator, because you know Ball is on that site with it. My ult's not ready. Second shot misses as well. State might have deflector shields of their own online. All it takes is one shot from this. In the smoke. Pop up. Find the first. No. No shot. Howard still up members though. They come in with their weaponry. Yeah, it's gonna be cleaned up. Orbital strike just to secure this one. And Chamber, unfortunately, still very lonely back here. And did you actually uh, does he have armor? No, you will. Okay, so you do want to save here. It does save you a little bit of money. The play there, though, from Morgan State to kind of explain a little bit more what was going on, was they used the uh, the abilities over at A to try and force people to rotate, and if Howard got greedy and tried to rotate through the middle of the map in any way, the chamber with that sniper rifle, with the tour de force, would have been waiting there to try and take them out. Unfortunately, Howard understands that. They know that they're playing up in weaponry. There's no reason to take risky rotations okay. like that. And now the question is, Morgan State, you've seen this double op set up. You know, two, three rounds in a row now, right? How do you want to approach this? Because you know there's going to be two operators. There's three lanes to approach. Hey, for fortunately, it's not my problem. It's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty well, hard Ball to break. Is, Ball is actually repositioned yeah. mid here, right? So Morgan State, they think, okay, one off's going to be A, one off's going to be B. Maybe we can get through mid. Ballin finds the pick through the Yoru clone onto Sydney. It would have been a collab, but... Oh, man. I mean, that's a brutal start, too. You don't have smokes now, right? Smokes, another great tool to try and deal with operators. You smoke off the angle they're playing from, but... Now, Ballin's paying a, a mortgage a on, on Morgan State's minds right now. Because <laughs> not only did he play mid, but he played mid on the only round that Morgan State have really pressured it through. I, there have been one or two more uh, up catwalk. But when it comes to actual, like, down mid pressure... It's just really the first one, and Ballin's just read it like a book. That haunt doesn't get deep enough either to flush Ballin off truly. It does cover enough for the rotate through mid over the A site. But you know, you know it's coming to the A site. There's already three players here. Oh! The Molly, not quite good enough actually. Dial is still gonna be taken down. Can he trade it out? Morgan State, they found their way to an A. They still have to deal with Tome. One it's so enemy bloody. Remaining. But eventually they get a slight player advantage. Low health though for Pepperoni. This is. This is still winnable for Howard. Yeah, just find that health bar alone. That's going to be a huge advantage for them. I want to point out, though, there was a, a huge oh, pick in now. mid. Ballin missed a shot onto the sky. Sky returns yeah. the favor, does not let them get away with that. And that was absolutely massive for opening up the map and the round for them. Now one versus two. Tai Sheed with two flash drives. Two flash, two opportunities. Doesn't use them. Tries to take Biscuit in the 1v1. Gets taken out 10 to 11. This one is a nail biter. Really, really even here. I mean, uh, Taishi definitely trying uh, their best right in that in that uh, opportunity. You saw the like hail mary uh, of the, the the zero point, the KO knife, to mm -hmm. reveal that there was no one playing by generator, nobody playing in tree. So you know they're gonna be, have to be playing like toward hell. So good information good gained. Spot. Unfortunately, just couldn't win that first gunfight. Now we shift things out. I'm actually surprised that we haven't seen a timeout in the second half. With how, yeah. how tight of a game it's been, I guess both teams just want to keep that, that pace up, right? First round, a lot of pauses, a lot of off and on. Both of them feel like they're playing good Valorant right now, and they would be absolutely correct, <laughs> assuming so. Definitely. Another alien, though, out of Morgan State. No ultimates to boot this time. But I believe the Brimstone's there to throw the Molly down if they try to execute. Oh, Howard. They're confident. At least somewhat that it's coming toward A. 
Who's next? Here comes the dimensional trip. This has been a great tool for Morgan State to get information. They got that molly out. Dialed. They got that molly out oh, yesterday. Time to jump. Oh, really interesting timing. Back. So a really cool interaction just happened that stops Morgan State from taking the fight that they wanted to go for. So the Seekers, the ultimate used by Howard State, oh, reveals whoa, wait, the wait, wait, position. Wait. That was that was a great sick zero knife. point just there. He caught them rotating away. So that gave Howard effectively the information that, yeah, they're moving back out across the map. We can unstack A. Sorry to cut you off. That was no, no, really no, that important. was huge. Well, but, now it's this <laughs> awkward ping pong, right? Yeah, that's like, now they know that I know. Yeah, exactly. That they know that this I know. It, it comes down to a lot of intuition and hitting your shots, dialed. Only good for one, then. I, you hate to see your controller go down so early with so much util still in the pocket. You really do. Now two players lined up in tree. And Ball is not able to connect with the shots. Three on four. The health bars are low here for Morgan State. Trying to catch Sydney out through the wall. Nitro catches the player as they drop. Not necessarily a coordinated retake here from Howard. It's again, it is a tie sheet and a dream. I mean, at this point, can you even save the rifle? 39 health, that's Flash one bullet right. to the body that will take you down. And there's no way you do this. It's simply no uh, way. Yeah, uh, uh, unfortunate. I thought, I thought the Riot Gun Buddy was going to see him through it. <laughs> oh yeah, you're here at a Riot sponsored event, you got the Riot but Gun Buddy. What, a, what an in-depth round to showcase just how intelligent these players are, oh, right? Yeah. You know, the, the back and forth there that Morgan State have to try and play, you you know, we have the opportunity to see all of the information for both teams, for us, yeah. right? <laughs> Morgan State are only working with what they know, what they can see. The fact that Nitro gets caught in the dimensional drift by the Seekers gets concussed, right? So you're not able to see, you're not able to shoot straight, right? Morgan State trying to bail out of that, but then getting caught on the bailout, so they double back and double down. What a cool round to showcase just how smart these players are. And we're back to A. I seems like these teams have a, have a favorite sight ball. More pressure. A is for Atlanta. It took, me, it took me a, de uh, a depressing amount of time to think of, like, what can I say A was... We're not going to I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I'm not going to leave you, you know, too alone here. <laughs> Taishi's going to throw out a molly here. Stop this push from really coming in. That's actually going to deny a lot of space. Great flashes. Keeps the players up. And most notably, isolated beast mode there as they now try to push in. Nitro down Sydney as well. The smokes are out. The cavalry have arrived for Howard. They're going to put this thing up to match point. 12 to 11, that is assuming Biscuit can't make a miracle happen. I mean, the bright side is at least Biscuit has the spike. Uh, never mind, going for the save. Going for the save. This is smart. Yeah. This is, uh, this is, this guy late, on their shoulders. right? You want to be able to hold, and you take a look at the economy. Thank you so much to our amazing observer for uh, showing us the scoreboard right now. You take a look at the economy. It is going to be a little bit of a struggle for like pepperoni or beast mode to be truly buying going into the next round, right? So uh, by Biscuit saving this rifle, left. they're going to have enough to just put one in their friend's hand, yeah. right? So, really smart call. You want to play for the OT here. You know that the 1v4 is so unbelievably unlikely. And on top of that, this is something that started out, I remember all the way back with like, I think it was like Ninjas and Pajamas really started doing it mm -hmm. uh, on eco rounds every once in a while in, in like CSGO. Left. They just back up into their spawns sure. with pistols and sit there in a little circle and <laughs> huddle up and talk. Like, they either they're going to use their timeout afterwards and have even more sure. time to talk, but it kind of takes the pace of the game away from the opposing side in the save round. You can kind of do the exact same thing. <gasps> That's nice. You know what? They're, they're going to be fine. Power to Rich, but right. uh, Morgan State used that time to talk. I actually kind of half expected them, that more than half expected them, to call a timeout at this point in time, but... We're going to keep things going. They use that time while they're waiting, talk things out, figure out exactly what they want to do, because they have one chance to send this thing into overtime. Reminder, folks, $5,000 in our prize pool here at the Kickback Cup today. Only one of these teams is going to move on and play a second game on the stage just after this one. Howard just need one round, but Morgan State can send us to overtime. What a passive setup from Morgan State to start. Pretty active from Howard as well. Peaking lobby, peaking mid, peaking garage. Well, and they're wondering if Ballin's going to go for a walkabout, right? Ballin's done it a couple of times. It's been sparse. Yeah, you but can see Morgan State like are this, watching behind them. Exactly. Yeah. In a round like this, if they could catch Ballin on one side of the map, it would be so helpful. But Ballin, disciplined as ever. Especially with the operator. 
We take it. We take bets like over under on thirty seconds or less. Oh, uh, way over, way yeah, over. This, we, is, this it, might take some time. Morgan State want to enjoy the time on stage while they still have it. They're gonna walk into this operator too, right? It's gonna it's, be so tough. They gotta try and flush out Toba. They, they here. should. They, they flash they it every single time. Nitro has flashed this on every single time Toba's been here. I mean, the flash of the clones. It Some would be gonna get it. No out of there. way. Surely, don't try swing it. No, they're gonna they're gonna flash it. Right now. Oh, oh, oh no. my goodness, the one time Toba's ready for it too. Strikes while the iron's hot. Howard now they're gonna stop this thing right in its tracks. Win this thing right here and now. Oh my god, Taishi has caught an incredible timing, but fortunately it is flashed off the angle just in the nick of time. Howard will have an advantage coming into the retake, especially considering all of the utility that Morgan State have already spent taking this site. They are coming in with one operator. Operators are difficult to retake with, but the blade storm has been popped for Howard. Ballin is not going to be using the op. Oh. It's instead the blade storm. What a beautiful zero point! Another amazing bit of information gathering from Taishi. Push it. Beast mode now down to one. It is a numbers game, ladies and gentlemen. Just hit your shot and make the game go longer for Morgan State. Rifling through the smoke, Sydney is taken down. Howard pushing on with their four members, looking in on the generator, but the crossfire too powerful. Morgan State taking it into a two-on-two. The operator not great for taking these angles aggressively, but Ball comes in, makes the numbers go in their favor. Toba's got to defend him while they defuse the spike, and they do! They've got more than enough. Howard lock things up after a disastrous start to the game. They make the comeback happen and lock things down. A 0-5 start for Howard University, and yet they'll be able to pull it out just by the skin <laughs> of their teeth. 13 to 11 to start the day, Cameron. You can't ask for better Nah, dude, that. nah. Collegiate just delivers. What an insane performance by Howard. I tell you, man, Collegiate Valorant <laughs> lands especially when these players get themselves riled up on stage. They make the magic happen. And I mean, look, fantastic showing from Morgan State Definitely. on top of that. They showed us that preparation that we were asking for. They show us when those teams really care, when they put those strategic minds to use, the strategy can really, really, really shine. I love their ability to lock the map down. The second they got an advantage, they were cordoning off Howard to quarters, halves of the map. It was fantastic strategic play. But unfortunately for them, Howard's adaptation was really the highlight. You gotta give it to Nitro, though. What an amazing performance on this Yorver, right? I mean, this was part of the early start for Nitro. These shots are clean, crispy. That crosshair placement, perfect. Barely has to move his mouse for some of these. And I mean, Nitro, I think Nitro almost dropped 30. I think it was 28 or so, if I remember correctly. I ran out of fingers at 10. <laughs> <laughs> you got toes, door, uh, but then we hit 20, and you know we'll we'll figure it out. We got 40 between us. We'll make it work. But Nitro's ability to make such a unique pick of the Yoru. Yoru is contentious in Valorant, uh, right? Because it's so hard to find consistent value with this. But the, the timings, the the aggression on this Yoru play as well, right? Really caught off guard, uh, caught Howard off guard early, and it was so cool to see that succeed. God, absolutely round, so incredible stuff. And for me, it was by and large those mid-round calls. I want to know who the IGLs for these teams are. Something absolutely. we, especially in Collegiate, we don't get to know a lot of. When we really got to like sink our teeth into Collegiate and get to know the teams, get to know who's talking, you know, the Choi Boys, the Jivies, the, the Ryujins and all that. Uh, and it really gets to understand who is IGLing and who is behind a lot of these creative plays. The hours that they put in are insane. Sure. And to VOD viewing other teams into preparation, into counter stratting, stuff like that. Both teams showed phenomenal stuff on that front. And a, a mechanical front. Plays from Ballin, Biscuit, Nitro, like you were talking about. They showed us that star power that some of these bug stock collegiate players can have. This has really been uh, the entire smorgasbord that you could ask for. And I mean, you know, we talked about, like, I think we had, like, three major buzzwords today, right? Go for we it. We have preparation, it. coordination, and <laughs> adaptation coming into this. Oh my. The adaptation, especially from Howard, was just so impressive. Yeah. Uh, especially on that attacking side. That attacking side looked doomed, right? We said it already, but an 0-5 start, you don't come back from that most of the time. It's so difficult to do so, but Howard changing up their pace, changing up their play style, not just once, but twice. As, as later on, they got caught off by the real adaptation from Morgan State, who started taking more map control. It's so impressive to see this back and forth between these teams, these IGLs. You know who I didn't get to highlight enough? And who might just be an IGL, like, just with the way they play? You, you, kinda, sure. you gotta tell, right? A lot of time, it's the controller player. Yeah. I saw I saw Taishid. Tai I saw Taishid. Every knife, maximum kill. information. Yeah, the flashes sure. and the gunplay were, were solid, but, like, 
dude, every single knife connected, every single one had a lineup, whether it's earlier on mid round, late round. Yeah. The positioning and the information gained from the KO was probably one of the most critical factors to Howard actually being able to make that comeback. Smart play is so important in Valorant, right? It's chess with guns. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Valorant is, dude. I mean, it, it, it's not just about hitting your shots. Yeah. Obviously, if you're not hitting your shots, it's going to be hard to win games against players who are this good. But the, the way that not only was Taishid able to get a lot of information out of the zero point for their team, right? But also the way that Howard denied so much information, right? They were ready for the, the, the fade lineups almost every single time. I feel like we hardly saw more than maybe one haunt, two haunts throughout the game incredible. actually succeed to no fault of Morgan State. Howard were just that good. And I'm excited to hear a little bit more about them. Tell you guys a little bit about our next match and what's coming up. We're gonna throw things back down to the stage and Andrea. Hey, what's Hey, what's up, you guys? And once again, welcome back to the Kickback 2022. We just had an awesome game of Valorant where both of these teams, Morgan State and Howard, gave it their all crowd. Were you not excited about that matchup? No, it was contentious. I'm actually going to have a conversation with the casters. Guys, did you expect this matchup to be as close as it was? Because I was on the edge of my seat. Only really because it's Collegiate Valorant. Gonna come <laughs> <up on top. laughs> I, I only expected it to be this close because it's Collegiate Valorant. Collegiate Valorant always delivers. To, we, we, can talk, we can wax poetic all day about I, it. Look, yeah. if I have learned anything from the University of Central Florida, it is that you can never count a, a team out of a game, a tournament. I don't care what rank they are. I don't care how little time they've had to improve. Sure. I think one of the most historic runs ever was by that school. They won two tournaments in the same day that they like were like 200 30, rounds. Yeah, they were like 30th seed in them. Yeah. Like you literally cannot count any school out and going down five rounds. I think even Paul and I knew like there's still a, there's chance, still a chance here. There's still a chance they make that comeback happen. And of course, in the most entertaining of ways. Oh, just like Jim Carrey said, right? So you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have the next matchup coming.